All right, Chris. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah, sir. we can. Hi. Uh, so a while ago, I, I brought up two points a while ago. One of them was it didn't make sense to me that um, there were homosexual animals. How would that be compatible with Islam if animals are uh, acting under God's will? Why would he make animals that way? Basically, it just didn't make sense to me. So that's one question I have. And I have uh, other questions too, but maybe we can just start with that one. Are you a theist? Do you believe in God? No, I'm a. I guess I, I'm an atheist. Okay, so um, why is this an, a concern of yours then? It's not it's, really it's, a concern of mine. It's just, it's just for theism. So let's 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 understand this. Is this a defeater for theism? It just seems to contradict the you know that like it, in theory let's say there was a god and that he didn't want animals to he didn't want humans to be homosexual why would he make the animals homosexual he didn't make them all homosexual did he <laughs> yeah why why it just doesn't make sense to me that he would it makes no, such more sense with an atheist is, point of view where you I, say I we're all you, animals yeah i don't know what your name is but we don't attach sin to what animals do so what, whether animals cannibalize their young, whether they, you know, some animals can transition gender, yeah? Frogs, I think it is, or some types of lizards, Chris. That, that, there's no sin regards to that. It's only for human beings we can't do certain things. Certain animals can eat pigs. We can't. Okay. I, I guess that's fine. It just, to me, makes more sense. Uh, if you look at it from like an atheist perspective, where we're all animals and there are gay, there are homosexual humans and there are homosexual animals, and there's some consistency there where there's like a strong division there's, between Chris, there are cannibal an animals and there are cannibal human beings as well. Can I ask you a question, Chris? Yeah, are gays detrimental to the human race? No, why not? Um. Well, I, I don't think they they cause any harm. If everyone was homosexual, it would be a problem. If, if, everyone, if, if everyone became gay, if everyone became homosexual, then what happened to your survival of the fittest and natural selection? Is it isn't it a kind of defective gene? This, if it is a gene, I think it has to do more with testosterone in the womb after um, in pre during pregnancy. So um, is it a defect? Uh, yeah. Oh. So homosexuality is a defect. Yeah, but it's harmless. There's if there's not a huge there's not enough of a population of homosexual people to, you know, cause like to, to end, you know, humanity or anything like that. It's just you know, it's 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 like it's harmless. It's a harmless defect. It it's harmless. Yeah. I don't no, want to go there. I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know where you want to take this discussion. Look, Chris, I don't, I don't think I can take it to the animals if you like. I, I just well, I okay, just maybe, maybe, maybe I'll bring, bring us something argument. else. In it. I, I, I'll make it easy for you. Is it anal passage, two way or one way? I'm not pick. I'm not picking that up. I am. Is it two way or one way? Is it exit only or is it entry as well? I mean, or is it uh, detrimental to the human body? It's it's yeah it's detrimental to the human body. To, yeah, to harm. do it's, it's, it is harmful then, isn't it? Uh, anyway, let's get off this topic because TikTok's okay, going to okay. <laughs> right. I'll change the subject. Yeah, the other thing, the other thing that I wanted to ask you about was, I brought up how you know, it's it doesn't seem like you can really believe in evolution if you believe in uh, Islam. And one of the things to me that's very observable is that people look different. And how do you explain why people look different without, you know, genetic, you know, without mutation over time, without evolution, basically? Like, you understand what evolution is? Yeah. What? It's basically, you know, mutation over time. And no, the, change the, of species. Change of species. But don't oh. you, can't you see how, like, with enough change over time that you can get to the point where you can no longer reproduce? In, you believe your ancestors were fish? Yeah, it's to some. To, to we had a common ancestor with a fish. 
No. <laughs> you didn't have a common ancestor. <laughs> No, the common ancestor came after the fish. The fish became the common ancestor. All right, then what do you think about like donkeys and mules that are hybrids between two species? No, there's no, there's no, there's no... Instead of going to technicalities, let's understand one thing, Chris. Um, so when we have all of these variations and developments and evolution, um, when we talk about something develops, something becomes, if there's no agency behind it, an agency capable of having abilities and power and also having abilities to implement laws and principles. Can you have these processes flourish? To give you an example, just to illustrate it in a way, suppose you have a big warehouse and you have a power source. I'm giving you some tools for you, like a generator. And a generator is there, and you have a big warehouse, and you have all of these things, materials, plastics, whatever, okay? If there is no agency, whether it's a robot programmed or a human agency, intelligent human being, to actually want to, with volition, so we're talking about intentionality, want to assemble things, these things and want to assemble things based on the laws that are already present. So I'm giving you the laws, the laws of nature, laws of physics. If this were even present there within this warehouse and there is no agency, there's no robot, there's no human being, there's, there's a power source, would you think anything will transform? Would you think anything would happen from, from yeah. these things, material things? Would they somehow rearrange to something different or would it be there as it is? So even if we go back now to the analogy of evolution, it doesn't matter wherever and you know what, whenever it started, if you don't have an agency who willed it to happen, who had the ability to do so, and put the physical laws of the universe to do that, if you had no physical laws, can you have evolution occurring? Okay, so with the the agency question, um, the argument sounds like you know how were you, how would you assemble something out of these components? without agency. Um, it seems like, you know, every human is assembled out of components and there's no God involved. You came from your parents. No, you're so, assuming, assuming human beings were self-assembled. I'm saying if you start with just matter and there is nothing, no physical laws, think about it. I'm questioning the process cannot happen if the physical laws, there's some laws which are being implemented. So the question would be, where did this physical loss come from? I'm going back to outside the comfort zone of evolution, the ordinary mechanisms. I'm questioning the yeah. very existence of physical laws that is driving it. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. It's I, I, going by back a to program the... through a programmer. So if yeah. there were no physical laws in our universe, can this process proceed? Um, no. Good. So let's go back to the physical laws now. Can the physical laws implement themselves on things? If I were to write an equation here about the theory of relativity or the, the of thermodynamics or you know, Newton's laws or Einstein's law, anything, a law in paper, the equation, is this equation on paper able to do things? Uh, that that piece of paper by... with writing on it. Okay, imagine these are these are the writing, okay, on a piece of paper. Can this now do things? Can it implement? Does it have the power to implement it? Uh, in, you mean implement the, the law of the theory of relativity? Yeah, let's say it says laws of attraction and laws of re repulsion, contrary to what we have in the physical universe. I've just made an equation. Can this equation implement it, even though it doesn't have any consciousness, it doesn't have self-awareness? It doesn't have any ability to implement anything. It's just an equation on a piece of paper. Sure. Can it do anything? Uh, no. Exactly. So when we're talking about the physical laws that we so much take for granted in the universe, how can these physical laws implement it unless there's an implementor? The laws they themselves uh. can't do anything because the laws are not self-aware. The laws are not conscious. So the laws cannot implement it. What well then? What implemented the implementor? 
with no, no, no. Let's go one step at a time. I think you, you've got the point. So can you have physical laws if they were in existence only? They implement these laws in action, the enact in action, manifest the laws into action. The answer is you and I agree they cannot. So the question now is the physical laws themselves need an implementer by That's by by this very okay. Now you tell me how does he implement it? There but are some not... things there are some things that I think you, that we both agree that you have to just grant as no, not as, this one. I'm not gonna grant you that one. Well, I'm saying you have God. You say that there is nothing that no, no, no. We, we can tell you why no God. God. No, no, we can go step by step and establish that. Sharif is going to do that, you know, quite easily in a few few minutes. But before we go to that, how we establish the very necessity of a necessary being and why the necessary being will possess volition, power, ability, knowledge, and so on and so forth. What we are now talking about is an alternative view, which is atheism, materialism, in which you have granting of or granted of physical laws the question is the physical laws are not conscious they cannot implement themselves anything they're not self-aware so how uh, does it happen i don't believe someone is pulling the string somewhere I no, no i'm not asking power. to believe anything i want you to give me a rational explanation sure. how do physical laws implement it i think i think they've always been there they were never implemented they just have always existed Look, okay, even if they always exist, Hamza, just one second. <laughs> even if the physical laws exist always, they will never be able to implement anything. Just like a well, generator in a warehouse, unless someone does something to it, switches it on, and the generator then transfers electricity and the power goes there, the generator will be sitting there doing nothing. The physical laws, even if they were there for a very long time, infinitely enough long time, they won't implement anything. I think, I think you're assuming at some point there were no physical laws, and I'm saying there's all no, there no, no. been physical I want laws. you to give us a rational explanation in which how does physical laws without self-awareness, without volition, without will, implement the law in reality, in manifestation in reality? My point is that they're they're not implemented, they just exist. Like, what about gravity? Is someone pulling you down? The point. They just exist. How does how does how do laws like an equation on a piece of paper? How does it implement it in action? How does it? Do you want to, Sharif, take this point forward? I mean, I mean, I've made it clear, you know, enough times. I'm saying you have to grant yeah. that they just exist. There is no implementer of those laws. They've just always have been there. So you're trying to say it's a brute contingent fact? Uh, yeah, it's an assumption. I would say I don't know exactly if i describe it as a brute contingent fact okay so what Mansour's basically is giving the analogy or the is trying to explain the difference between like an abstract entity and a concrete entity so an abstract object are things like mathematics laws these types of ideas and they don't have yeah. causal effect causal like effect that. is the ability to have that. an effect within the physical world so just because yeah. you have a mathematical equation for, for gravity or whatever, it doesn't have causal effect. And then you have concrete uh, objects like me and you and physical things around us. Uh, and we have the ability to have causal interactions within the world. Yeah, that, that's, that makes sense to me. But I don't right. understand so, what so the, the issue is. is that, okay, are we, are we talking about these physical... See, when we talk about the universe, we tend to talk about that there are physical things... And there are these non-physical interactions between the physical things. These laws. Mm -hmm. We call them laws. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I think Mansour is basically explaining that these laws that tells or dictates or determines how matter interacts, those laws itself, one, you have to be able to explain why they exist in the way that they do. You have to explain also how they came to exist. And you also have to explain how these abstract type objects, these abstract entities of laws, how they have this causal power to enact things upon physical material. So you're saying how do they came to exist? My whole point is that they've always existed. In no, there was two other things I said, but it doesn't matter. It's a bit of a complicated, well, not complicated, but I think it can be a bit tricky. I think, look, Chris, it's a very, let me let me try another angle for you, yeah? But we're pretty far from evolution. My point was, you know, we, we can observe variation in 
the population and how did that variation get there? You know, I can look at someone from China, for example, and they have yeah. different g genetics than me, no matter. Chris, Chris, yeah. Chris, we've got no issue with adaptation, adapting to environments. We've got no issue with that. Yeah. The issue we have is the idea that man used to be a fish. And prior to that, he was some kind of an eba. And prior, prior to that, he was a single cell. And prior to that, he was some kind of magic custard. Yeah. This is what we have an issue with. Now you Mine. think you have evidence? You know, the last time we had a discussion, you said you could you had evidence that the universe always existed, or he's going to go away and get evidence that the universe always existed. No, no, no. So you now can see then that's just your belief, yeah? It's it's a belief, yes, that it's always it's just a belief. belief. Yeah. Right. And when I spoke to you about DNA last time, and the idea DNA is against the idea of there not being a god. How how do you contend with that? We said again, DNA is against the idea of. Oh, yeah, yeah. So DNA is kind of evidence for the existence of a creator. I don't. I don't think so. You don't think so? Okay. Explain to me where the information in DNA arrives from. Just from uh, the structure of the of the the molecules. No, no, no. Where does the information come from? The coded information, the type of information we see in in a blueprint to a building or into a computer program. Where does this information come from? So Ham Hamza, can I just? Uh, ask you a question on that que on that point that you're asking to clarify for help, help maybe helps me and helps Chris. When you say where's the information that comes in the DNA, is it like you saying if you got dots and dashes, where does the information come from to tell us that it's Morse code and the meaning of those dots and dashes? Is that what you're analogizing? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the analogy is uh, that, the analogy I like to use. Um, is the blueprint to a building that you cannot have the building without the blueprints to it. Yeah. And the blueprints don't just appear. We know that the result of something intelligent, the but code but decoding yeah. that tells the cell what it's to become is the same equivalent of a blueprint to a building. It's coded information. Yeah, but also but the uh, dots and the dashes, when you look at dots and dashes, dots and dashes don't tell us anything about information unless you yeah. know Morse code. And if you know Morse code, then you need an informed person to know how to write the dots and dashes to communicate information. And then you need a person who has intelligence and uh, in knowledge of Morse code to be able to interpret that. So the information comes before the dots and the dashes. Yes. So the DNA is, you know, your four base pairs and the DNA in these four base pairs produces these gene sequences. The gene sequences in and of themselves don't tell us anything. The matter doesn't tell us anything. The atoms don't tell us anything. But the particular arrangement creates an abstract information that tells the, the, the cell and whatever what it needs to do, the information. There's an information, and it's an abstract information like language or like Morse code. Very yeah, nice. so so with the DNA, we can observe the DNA changing. You know, there are viruses that will modify your you, DNA. You're not, you're, not, you're not paying attention, Chris. Can, my can point I give is, it a try? Can, you, you my, know, no, Chris, 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 seriously, you're not paying attention. Yeah. If you think that's an answer to what you just asked, you're not paying attention to the question. His, is his point that there's an abstract idea that there's information and it doesn't matter what the DNA actually looks like? No. <laughs> That's why you're not listening to me. Okay, can you explain yeah. it? Can you explain it? Uh, okay, I'll make it easy for you. I'm, I'm going to try to make it easier than what Sharif just did for you. Okay, whenever you see this type of information, coded information, yeah, is it ever the result of something that's not intelligent? Uh, yeah, I would say life, DNA. But when it, do you know, you know, no, no, in your human experience, have you ever seen coded information that can be demonstrated isn't the result of something intelligent? Um, no. No. Okay. So when we see the same type of information in DNA, our uni human uniform experience tells us it's the result of something intelligent. Because uh, we know of no other way. We know of no other way for this information to arrive other than that. Well, we know how everyone gets their DNA. You can do, you know, genetic tests. You can see it changing. You can see how it changes. We know the mechanisms you, you, no, that no, no, modify no, no. You, DNA. You, 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 no disrespect. This is flying over your head, dude. You, you keep going forward and we're going back. No, you're, you're, your argument is someone created the DNA, but we can... We no, know no, my argument is not someone created the DNA. My argument is where does the information in DNA come from? 
So do you believe God created the first organism? Well, I'm asking you, as an atheist, where does information in DNA come from? Mutations and, you know, other types of... <laughs> Hamza, uh, salam alaikum, brothers. Uh, salam alaikum, brothers and sisters. Wait, I don't, I don't understand. It's, if Can you I have... Chris, okay, okay, what do you mean by mutation? What do you mean by mutation? Mutation is a change or an addition of information to the DNA strand. Change so of it's what? adding, it's making, it can make the DNA longer. It can no. be, is it, mutation is a change of what? The molecules, which is... No, you didn't say that. What did you say? It's a change of what? Information. You said the change of information, didn't you? Yeah, but what is information? Right, right, right. So where did the original information come from? It came from the first life when it started. Oh, so whatever the first... Where did it come was. from? It was a sterile universe. Where did this information come from? God didn't reach down and plop a little I'm cell asking, in the I'm ground. asking you what, what, how it didn't get there. I'm asking you how it did. Okay. okay I'm, my let point me, is, let me my point is, one second, one second, one second, not getting just, anywhere with this I'm idea. No, no, because, I am getting because somewhere. Because we observe that DNA changes. If God's not changing DNA, come? who's changing the DNA? He hasn't DNA? understood the question yet. <laughs> Chris, where does information that tells what the cell should become come from? Your parents, the cells that it, it came from. This DNA is copied. I told how you, you how do you exist? Question, you got it from your parents. Let, let me give it you a try, Sean. Your, your parents. <laughs> yeah, you got your DNA from your parents. You don't think you got your DNA from your parents? We're yeah, talking about the first That's not the question he's asking, Chris. He's asking you about the basic, you know, I think uh, 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 the brother uh, Sharif actually mentioned this, but let me just tell you uh, in, a, in a different way, perhaps, yeah? So... If I asked you that there was a random word written on a beach. No, let's stay in DNA. Let's just stick to how no, no, I will, I will, I'm, This is all about the DNA. Hamza, where I need did you get your to, DNA I need from? To, I need to build the pre premise because I'm asking you in a you different way. you have a mom way. and a dad? Wait, wait, Chris, hold your horses. Just listen to this. So if I no told you that analogies. there was a word on the, on the beach written, for example, the word uh, basketball. Yeah, yeah somebody sure. wrote the, the word basketball on the beach. Yeah. If I asked you that, did this word originate from someone intelligent or was it just random? What would you say? I would say it originated from someone intelligent. Good. Now, coming back to the DNA, in yeah. every one of the hundred tr trillion cells that we have in our body, both you, myself, everyone here, yeah, there is a longest word that has ever been discovered. You know what that is? DNA. The human. I, I, under, I understand your point. Wait, uh, wait, point wait is... let me finish, man. Chris, hold your horses. Yeah, okay. Be patient. So, that longest word is the human genetic code. It is 3.4 billion letters long. Remember right. that word I told you about the basketball on the beach? Yeah. You said it can only come from an intelligent person. Now, this letter, okay. this longest word is 3.4 billion letters. Okay? How is it? we can find 3.4 billion letters of genetic alphabet in exactly the same order in every single human cell without it's not the same order. without inferring it is the same order no GTCA, there's mutations you, you everyone's be, dna is different no 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 you you check i'm talking about the actual within the dna you know the um, the nucleotide in one organism in one human yeah. he didn't say between I humans said, no I even because you can have you can have uh you can I'll have tell you what, why don't you, hit dna and you then know you whatever DNA questions you have keep it in another cell keep it for until yourself you get until until after i've finished so you can understand better now without inferring intelligence and a will behind it how is it possible for this massive word 3.4 billion letters long come is it by chance? Is it necessity? Is it really that? Which one, which one is it? So I believe it started off by chance and it started off very small. Okay. And then over the time it got more and more complex. Where is the evidence for that? Uh, I don't have evidence for the origin. It's not scientific that it's a belief. Yeah, it's a belief. Yeah. Okay. So it's you're no better off than any other, any, any other belief. person having blind faith then. That's not very scientific. I thought you came from a premise of science where you have fact evidence, observe it, ob uh, something that's observed, something that's repeatable, uh, repeatable, and so on. You know, scientific knowledge is not just based on blind faith. I Okay, there's a there's induction going on because I know where I got my DNA from. I got it from my parents. Where did they get their DNA from? Oh, okay, okay. Where did you, okay let's go this way. Let me just play this game with my mate, Chris. Where did your parents get their DNA from? 
Their parents. And then, and where'd they get theirs from? Their parents. And where'd they get theirs from? But, okay, hold on. Let me introduce. Where'd they get theirs from? Second, their parents. Yeah, we got all day. And then, <laughs> parents. And theirs? Parents. Okay, so how old is the earth for you? Uh, it's it's a very old. Human beings. But let me, so we're going to go back me, all the way, right? So let's go back to the first. We're going to go back to the monkeys. Make, I want to make one point because I think we're getting somewhere. Do you so, believe you got your DNA? Okay. So do you believe your parents, 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 parents got their DNA from this common ancestor monkey thing, yeah? Uh, yes. Right. And where did that monkey man get his uh, DNA from? Parents. Keep going. Yeah, his parents. Going. So then we're going to go back into the eventually, ocean. Eventually, yeah? Hamza, Hamza, eventually no, we'll comes back. To the so we're going back now. We've we'll gone to the monkey man. We've gone to the fish. And the, where did the fish get their DNA from? Keep going. Keep going. Eventually, yeah, we'll go back to the original to cell. Life. Right. Right. Now we're back at the original cell. Where yeah. did the information come from to tell that cell what to become? Well, the original cell is very, very, way less complex than the cells now. Where did the information come from? Chance. Chance. Yeah. Do you, you and, think and that God created on one, one, one cell and then let evolution believe, run its course? Do you think chance is a real thing? Randomness is a thing? Uh, yes. Do you sure. have evidence for that? No? Yeah, there's randomness. What's your evidence everywhere. for randomness? What's your evidence for randomness? You can't predict the position of molecules and or of quantum. Um, what's it called? You can't you, you can't predict the position of things in quantum mechanics. At no, like no, a but you, you, no, you can't say that those things are there randomly. Well, you don't. They there's a probability distribution with where they could be. You don't. You can't. No, actually, you can't say they're there where they are randomly. It'd be based upon it, uh, effects of other things that you don't aware of. Uh I think that's unclear, actually, in quantum mechanics. No, no, it is unclear. That's why it's not evidence for randomness. Well, there's there's no conclusive evidence for non. Right, so you don't have evidence for randomness. So it's another thing you're believing blindly to support. But you your don't have evidence for determinism either. So you've got no evidence for uh, you've got you've got no evidence for a universe that's always existed, and you've got no evidence for this randomness that you're talking about. But yeah. I do have evidence for DNA coming from ancestors and DNA modifying. No, no, time. you've got no I evidence observe... from where the original inf information and DNA derived from. Now, that's, that's the, the question. Origin of life. That's the origin of life, though. No, no. But that's the question that he's answering. Because I want to ask you this simple question. When you see the same type of information in your worldview and your human experience, it's always something intelligent. Why are you special pleading and ignoring this human experience when it comes to something that um, will all, well, we know why you're doing it, but why are you doing it? If, the human, genome, the, if the human genome was perfect, I would why agree. Why are you following the rationality? Why are there, air, why are there, why is there viral DNA you know, in the human why genome? Why are you not following the rationality that when you see coded information, it's always a result of something intelligent? Why, when the same coded information is within DNA, do you not come to the same conclusion? Why are you special pleading? I just because there's, there's a mechanism that better explains how that information came to be and was assembled. Well, what's the better time. mechanism that explains how this information came to be then? Evolution. No, 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 that's... Evolution comes afterwards. We're talking about what brought the information in the first place. Abiogenetics. This it's is prior to evolution. Too. You're talking about the biogenesis event, okay? I'm talking about the before, initial cell. Evolution was... is not going to help you. Your yeah. parents ain't going to help you. Where does the information found in DNA come from? Uh, the first cell was probably very, very simple. Let's just start. Where does that. information come from that told that cell what to become? Where did the information come from? Uh, it's some type of chemical reaction. Oh dear. <laughs> what chemical reaction could cause this? There's there's trillions of chemical reactions having ev happening everywhere all the time. It it's it just takes one to result in something that can What's the reproduce itself. You're just waffling now. He is indeed. You're just waffling. I don't... <laughs> Chris, can I just... just making maybe... it up on the spot. Hey, Chris, can I ask you a question? Good. Does it... Is DNA, even if we talk about very simple life forms, is does it is it complicated? Yes, but it's much less complicated than the human genome, for example. That's fine. I'm not talking about that. Does the very base, like a uh, one-celled amoeba... Or E. coli, yeah. Does it appear to be designed? Um, appear to be designed. I would say it's based on what we know about how DNA can change. I would say it looks not, like it's. Yeah, but you're talking about DNA changing. We're not talking about change in DNA. You have to begin with DNA. 
it's like for example look if i had i don't know if the example has been given but if i had a you know a word document yeah and i wrote out or typed out a word document printed it and then i put it on a printer and it automatically printed like a million copies yeah. Then there might be changes to some of the letters. Yeah, the millionth and one copy has some weird changes that have taken place. That doesn't discount the fact that the original copy has the appearance of design, or the original thing that was everything was copied from, that had the appearance of design. It doesn't change that fact, does it? No, but let me just say this. If someone wants to believe that the origin of life was was like a... Designed? Some type of magic event. I would say that's that's fine. You can believe that. You Chris, know, we don't know the answers. Chris, 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 you believe in abiogenesis, yes? Yes, but I believe it, it came about via natural. So you believe um, that rock, yeah, a sterile rock over millions or billions of years turned into life, yes? Uh, what do you mean by rock? I mean, I think chemicals, molecules. Well, it's a rock. Rocks well, are made of chemicals, are they not? I would. I think it's it's more precise to say chemicals because a rock is just a form of of you know of a chemical. And, yeah, but yeah, it's not a chemical. It's not really accurate to say. You're talking about okay, atoms. You're saying sure, atoms, sure. lifeless sure. atoms that have no intelligence, that have no information, that have no life, became life. But we're still made out of lifeless atoms. The atoms are no, still but the same. Be, no, but those those things we look, Chris. Every experience we have is of biogenesis. Yes. Every experience we have. Yeah, is of biogenesis. When it comes to life, every experience we have is of biogenesis. You mean it's dependent on biogenesis? Biogenesis is life coming from life. Every experience that we have oh. of living things came from other living things. Yes. 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 Everything, every experience that we have of intelligent things have come from intelligent beings, yes? Yes, but right. I guess this now is, you this want is what me I'm confused believe, about. You want me to believe, Chris, that even though all of our billions, billions upon billions of worth of experiences of life coming from life, that there was an event when there was non-life and poof, it magicked into life, yes? Uh I don't believe it magic. I believe that some type of natural, natural, you know, cause led to it. I Is it deterministic or random? Is it deterministic or random? Um, it de I mean, I think that's more philosophical in terms of how Is you define Is it deterministic random. or random? Uh, you said random initially. I mean, if you're going to use like Hamza's definition, where it's, if you go down to like the atom level, I'd say it's deterministic. So now you're changing your answer to what you said to Hamza, yeah? Quite a common well, theme, isn't it? The arguments start changing. <laughs> so start because the reason it. why I say that, Chris, because if you said random, then you appeal to magic. Basically, no, you're, you're, well, you're definite. Okay, let me ask you a question. What's your definition of magic? So I was using random originally, like you throw die in the air. You don't know. The outcome is going to be like distributed in a way where you can't predict the outcome. But that doesn't mean it's random because when once you actually release the die from your thumb, you could do the physics and find out exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, but Chris, so you, you never said that. And you know you never said that because you said, oh, we don't have evidence for determinism as well. Now you're saying that the reason why we're talking about random, yeah, is because we have an ignorance of information. Yeah. Meaning we have an ignorance of the causes for the effects that we see. Sure. Yeah, yeah exactly. But no, you didn't have said that because you said, no, we couldn't even prove determinism. And then you try to give Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. And you know, if you understand Heisenberg, do you understand Heisenberg's uncertainty principle? That you no. you are referencing to Hamza? No. Well, you are referencing it to Hamza, which is... Right, my, my point is that... My my point, my whole point was Hamza said it's not random. And then I realized he's using a different definition of random than I had used when I no. said random. No, 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 no. I'm sorry, Chris. You're being insincere. Yeah. Because you used Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, which says that you can never determine a quantum level particles, position and motion exactly the same. One will become less uh, probable or the probability of determining one becomes less 
above the other. If you determine its position, then your motion you can't determine. If you determine its motion, then you can't determine its position. Yeah. This is this okay. is what you were referencing by saying that there are random events. Now, if you are going to appeal to that Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, then what you are basically saying is that on the fundamental level of reality is there are events which are fundamentally undetermined, which means they are not explained. There's no principle of sufficient reason as to explain why they exist in the way they do. And it's not just something which is, you know, out there. Everything is made up of these fundamental particles, which are, in your view, yeah, and under the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics, is ultimately random or distributed according to probability, meaning there is no pr the principle of sufficient reason to explain its position and motion at any given time or moment. Okay. I I, I apologize if I misspoke about the determinism. But you, this um, is... But I'm just saying, Chris, this is th this is what I get, Chris, a lot from atheists. Atheists go, oh, you guys believe in some sky daddy doing magic. I didn't mean no. the clouds, yeah? I didn't, I didn't I, mean it that way. I just, I I just know, wanted to say, I, I, was, I was just oh, trying to Chris, say something and I misspoke. Chris, can, I, guys, can I get back to something no, I really want to ask? No, but what I'm saying is this, Chris, is that, Chris, when it comes to magic, to be quite frank, our position, a theistic position, is consistent to how we understand the world, how we operate. Yeah. It's rational, yeah? It's even consistent to the scientific method, to be quite frank. Atheist position is inconsistent. It is really an appeal, ultimately, to brute contingent facts, which is basically to say there are things out there which are unexplained but could have been another way. They could have existed. They could not have existed. It's just unexplainable, yeah? It just happened to be. Yeah. That's your okay. position. Our position is that brute or contingent realities that exist, things that could have been another way, things that are limited and dependent, ultimately depend upon something that has to be necessary, not contingent. Do you understand? Okay. Yeah. No. Um, but you're still assuming that something has to be necessary and you're granting that that thing isn't contingent on anything, which is, seems to me like it's... A paradox. Good, 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 Chris, because what you're doing now is you're not understanding the term contingent and necessary. So let me explain. Contingent, yeah, means that thing that could have been another way. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. a possibility for it to have been this way and a possibility for it to have been that way. Like a red triangle. Okay. Is a red triangle contingent? Yes. Contingent doesn't mean dependent. Yeah. It's the conclusion yeah. of contingent that we come to, which means dependent, or we conclude that a contingent thing should be dependent. But contingent doesn't mean that. Contingent simply means that it is a possible existence. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. Right. So a red triangle, is that necessary or contingent? Uh, contingent. An eternally existing red triangle, is it necessary or contingent? Uh, necessary no contingent because even if it's eternal like i said contingent doesn't necessarily mean it's dependent contingent when you identify that you come to a conclusion that it's dependent contingent all it means is that it's a possible thing it could have been another way but is, what's, it seems like a judgment call to say it could have been another way and if you say it's eternal then can it you, implies can that it you imagine been a way. triangle that's not red yeah right so it's a possibility, isn't it? But uh, could I have imagined a God that's not Allah? Yes. So isn't it contingent well, that's, in the same way? No, 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 no. Hold on. Can you imagine a necessary being not existing? Uh, that's no. the better analogy. No. Right, exactly. So there are now two, in our, my mind, in my mind and your mind, Chris, there's certain things that I can imagine even if they don't necessarily exist in actuality, but I can imagine as possible a difference. And there are certain things in my mind, I can't even imagine there to be another way. It's like necessary. Yeah. Why Why is God not contingent if God could, could if you don't know the form of God, basically? Because, all, because when we come to this conclusion, say, oh, there's contingent things and contingent things are possible things and possible things require something to determine it 
to be a particular way. Like, even if you had an eternally existing red triangle, you would say, who painted it red? Why didn't they paint it blue? Yeah. So you'd still have to have something which is not contingent and would be therefore necessary to explain the existence of an eternally existing red triangle. Yeah. So you'd have this necessary thing. So we come to this conclusion of necessary. Yeah. This thing which cannot be another way has to exist, is eternal, independent, self sufficient, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. That you come to that conclusion. Yeah. So that's what we come to. That there must be this necessary thing. Now, the thing, the difference between me and you, Chris, yeah, let's leave the word God because it has baggages for you, Chris. I can see. Leave that word. Let's just use the word uh, eternal. The difference between you, we, well, the similarity is this me and you both agree that something eternally had to always exist. We both agree yes. that. The difference is you think that the thing that's always existed is a contingent thing, a possible thing. And I believe that the thing that's always existed is a necessary thing, yeah? A non-contingent thing, something that had to exist the way it does. That's the difference between us two. Okay. I think I, I, think I understand. Um, right. So, so, now you, so now the question is that if I adopt your position, I'm inconsistent. I'm not going to... Not just me. I'm saying you as well would be inconsistent because it breaks certain fundamental axioms of thought, like the principle of sufficient reason or causality, etc., that things require an explanation for their existence if they could be another way. You would have to say, yeah, I accept that for many things, almost everything in my life, but when it comes to the existence of the universe, I'm just going to accept it as a brute contingent fact. I'm going to say, yeah. no, I'm going to be consistent and adopt it all the way, to its conclusion, which is that there's something that's necessary, something that had to exist and couldn't exist in any other way. But um, the minute you define any qualities of that thing that you deem to be necessary, you make it contingent. No. No. No, no. For example, we would say that any D... So let, let me explain. Give me, one, give me one quality of the necessary thing, and I'll tell you why that quality is Self-sufficient. Self-sufficient. Yeah. It, it didn't uh, have to be self-sufficient. Existence. <laughs> Mention existence earlier. <laughs> but then, then they wouldn't be necessary, would it? Yeah. A necessary thing is self-sufficient. It doesn't. Self-sufficient means what? It doesn't require an explanation outside of itself to cause its existence. That's, that's, that's circular, though. It's not circular. Look. It's circular. <laughs> how is it circular? How, how does the conclusion saying, in the premise? Self-sufficient says that it's not contingent. That's basically the defi definition of it. Which means what? Explain what. What necessary. does contingent mean again? Uh, it can it can come in different ways. Basically, it doesn't didn't have to be that way. Right, and then the conclusion of a contingent thing that could have been in different ways is what? What do we conclude? If something could be multiple ways, if I had a table in front of me made out of wood. And yeah. I see that table made out of wood. I'm going to think, well, hold on. The wood exists. The table exists. But the table, the wood could have been a chair. It could have been a cutlery. It could have been plates. Yeah, it could mm -hmm. have been a hut. So it's yeah. not, it's just because I've got wood does not determine or necessitate that it's going to be a table. So mm -hmm. I, it's a contingent thing, isn't it? It requires an explanation outside of itself. Um, I guess uh, if you just say the universe as a whole is necessary, I don't understand. I don't understand okay. why the universe as a whole is a contingent because we only know it one way. We don't know if any Chris, other. Why is the universe part necessary? Of the, you, are you part of the universe, Chris? Yes. Are you? Could you? Could the universe exist without you existing in it? Uh, yes. So it's a possible being. A the possible possibly. being is that, oh. or a contingent thing is that, which could have been another way. And the universe could exist with you in it, and the universe could exist without you in it. Yeah. So it's not it's not necessary in that sense, is it? Um, it's contingent still. I mean, yeah, yes, but like, is it really a possibility that I'm not here? Is the question? It, it's it seems like it seems you like you don't it, want to go down that route, bro. <laughs> I'm the, Chris, man. You look. 
After all that this logical discussion, discussion, and if you were face to face with Hamza, there would be a very real possibility you might not exist. <laughs> yeah. I'm joking. So, Chris, but you understand you're... the point being Chris... is that you you can be a situation. You could not. You there will yeah. be a point in time, Chris, where you don't exist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but but um, the universe but will exist. There's only one. Un there's only there's only one universe. Like you can say something could be a different way, but it's it's just a philosophical thing because there's no way to um we, we don't have any other like a red triangle has already proved that oh, the universe oh, is oh, expanding Sharifa said to you do you believe the universe is necessary uh yes why ne necessary doesn't mean eternal they are the they are connected something yeah. can be contingent think... and eternal theoretically yeah. Is it, does a necessary it, thing have to be a certain way or can it be a different way? It has to be a certain way. Right. So the universe has to be the way it is. Yeah. And I, I don't think it could have been any other way. No, but you're part of the universe. Yes. So the universe, so if you were never born, would the universe still exist? Uh, yes, but, but it's a, just a theoretical discussion because I was born. No, but that's the point. But you didn't have to be, did you? Did it exist yeah. before you were born? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It is before you were born. It changed when yes. you were born. Didn't yes. It? Yeah. Yes. Also, uh, Chris, the, I you do know that the scientists, the scientists have actually confirmed that the universe is expanding, right? Uh, sure. I, I don't know much about that, but sure. Okay. You all. I don't know if you have read much about cosmology. They have also actually found out the approximate age of the universe. Okay. Something like thirteen point eight billion years. Okay. Yeah. So they can actually find out using the evidence, using uh, physics, using cosmology. If if the universe has an age, we can confirm that it's not eternal. Yeah, it's it's if it's got a specific age. Yeah, say for example, let's say it was uh, fourteen billion years old. That means before okay. fourteen billion years, it didn't exist. So it can we can actually know from the scientific evidence and the data available that it cannot be eternal. But I mean, uh, that I mean, do you mean like the Big Bang? It goes back to 13.8 million years. Yeah, they, still they actually there. calculated far back because if something is expanding at one point, it must be a small, you know, just but a small. Why can't it expand and point. contract and expand and contract and still always be there just in different forms? Yeah, but that's the thing, you know, the entropy wouldn't allow that because entropy is like when usable energy diminishes after a certain time so you can have the contract expanding you can go up to a certain limit but it cannot be eternal so that's but another that reason you can... the conservation of energy it does actually yeah because so I don't entropy, I don't think that's entropy true. is part of the one of the law of thermodynamics is the second law of thermodynamics so what you just yeah. mentioned is actually in a closed system not something in an open system but in a close in a closed system the uh, energy is conserved yeah so when when it contracts you know what entropy is it's like randomness, yeah. It's how how no, things are organized. It's not oh, randomness. <laughs> oh, don't explain. Don't explain it to him. I did already. Do you know what entropy is or not? Yeah, entropy is like how random something is, no, like how, versus not. how organized it is. Something that's highly organized has low entropy, and something that's highly, let's just say, random. It's organized. Is it? Is is the even distribution of energy? So when the, just so you quickly. You know, um, when the steam engine was first invented, mm -hmm. they found that there was this inefficiency in the steam engine. They couldn't work out what's going on. And then they realized you need a cold trap. So you need a district. You need some you, just heating something up is not sufficient. You need a, a region where you've got less heat and a region where you've got a lot of heat. And so therefore you get this efficiency because they realized that actually there's this new second law of thermodynamics called entropy, where entropy always increases, where you've got gradations of energy. So you've got low energy, high energy, and across the universe you have all of this, low energy, high energy. And so what happens is you get this evening out of energy, even out. Yeah. So the whole universe becomes homogeneous. So what Hashim is explaining, if the universe is eternal, then what you would have is you'd have a you'd because this is going to happen. This is not like this is called the heat death of the universe. That you'll get this situation where entropy reaches its maximum state, which means that it's evenly distributed across the universe. Yeah, 
So that everywhere you yeah. go, there'll be the exact same amount of energy. Once you get to that stage, you haven't increased or decreased energy. But what you've done is you removed entropy from the system, which means work, the ability to, to use the energy. Yeah, the energy becomes mm. useless now. Yeah, because entropy has reached its maximum state. So that's what Hashim's mentioning. Yeah, usable energy is gone, basically. Yeah. So, okay. Chris, this is, look, this is all available. This is something which is not just we are assuming or philosophical. This is based on actual data. Can I can I just go back? To, uh, no. I don't know much about this stuff. Chris, Chris. Can I just say one thing, Chris? You said about Big Bang to a Big Crunch. Have you ever heard the uh, argument, what came first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> yeah. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Uh, I don't know. No, you can't because each one depends upon each other, don't don't they? Yeah. So until you have one thing that occurs first, you'll not have that cycle, would you? Yeah. Yeah. By what the way, comes the first, the Big Bang or the Big Crunch? I, I can answer that question about the chicken and the egg, by the way. Yeah, is is it the rooster? <laughs> no, it's chicken. I think the egg, the egg came first. I chicken came first. It doesn't the matter. It doesn't matter. Well, okay, so at least one no, thing no. had to come first. That's the yeah. point. Yeah, they couldn't coexist each other. One couldn't depend upon the other, and the other couldn't depend upon the other eternally. Neither would exist. So in the same way, Chris, when you said Big Bang to a Big Crunch, neither would exist if that if that system or that cycle was co dependent for eternity it would be like exactly like the chicken and the egg example that's the point that i'm mm -hmm. trying to make you'd have to have the big bang or the big crunch become the first thing it would have to be a first thing i see um just on the on the evolution thing because i just want to stick to that uh we talked about the origin of life but if you if we can grant that you know I, I don't have a good expl explanation of the origin of life. Magic. It's Just say magic. Just say okay, magically. Sure. Magic. Magically, magically, the rock chemicals turned into life. <laughs> magically, the rock chemicals turned into life. Okay. Okay, let me proceed. Um, if you grant that, it still seems like we you have a problem. Grant them magic. Grant oh, them the if, magic. If, he, in, if someone grants that, if not you, <laughs> if someone grants that, um, I, it still seems like you have a problem because... Okay, you have life now, and now the DNA Chris, modifies over can time. Can I just put something in perspective for you? Wait, wait, I'm trying to... No, but I'm just trying to put something in perspective for you, because you're banging on about yeah. evolution, right? And I just want to put this in perspective for you. You've heard of Richard Dawkins, isn't it? I've heard of him, yeah, I've heard of him. All right, so he admits that proven evolution truth does not dismiss the existence of God. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. I, I right, agree. So why are you trying to use evolution to prove, disprove the existence of God? I'm saying that uh, you can. It seems like inconsistent with Islam because Islam uh, doesn't really give you room to believe in evolution and, and God. Evolution is inconsistent with atheism and naturalism. Uh, you know that because evolution can't explain things like consciousness, free will, subjective experience, yeah, morality. Doesn't explain any of these things. I think it explains morality. No, it doesn't. How can oh, in, order to, in order to be a moral being, you need to have free will. There's no, there's no evolutionary advantage of having morality if you don't have free will. But you can't explain free will under evolution because evolution under a naturalistic perspective would have to be deterministic. So therefore, you have no choices because everything is deterministic based upon the chemistry of your brain and the interaction of the chemistry in the external world. Yeah. So, so why would you have fixed. morality? Why would you have free will? You can't. It uh, doesn't make sense. Why would you even have the sensation of pain and pleasure? Well, it, that's because an it advantage for evolution. It does. No, Chris. The argument would be this. The, the argument would be this. No, no, let me explain. The you feel pain if something pleasure. is causing harm to you. So if you didn't feel pain and you had your hand on the stove, you could die. Then you wouldn't reproduce. So animals that, that feel implies pain have an advantage free will, over animals though. that didn't. Chris, Chris free will to move your hand. It implies yes. free will. Uh, it implies yes, that you have, have a the, conscious no, it's awareness. Well, no, it, could, we, it, could, it doesn't would you, apply. Would you move well. your hand voluntarily, or would it be f like just random? Um, if you believe it's just chemicals, then you would say it's deterministic that you'll move your hand. Can I recommend a book for you, Chris? Yeah, sure. It's called Atheist Guide to Reality by Alex Rosenberg. 
you need to understand the presuppositions of your position of what you believe to be true. You should be a determinist and you should be a nihilist based upon your principles of uh, naturalism. And you know, Hamza, the problem is if he was those two things, he would have a real trouble re reconciling evolution with human experience like free will, morality, pleasure, pain. Look, if you're a determinist, if you're a determinist, the chemistry, the chemicals in your brain are determined. It doesn't matter whether you feel pleasure or pain, pain, you're going to do what you're going to do. So why yeah, would the, the, the pleasure attribute... and pain are chemicals? That's Sorry. the pain and pleasure are not ex exempt from the chemical reactions. They are Agreed, part of that. But why the sensation? That's the point. Why this quality experience? The sensation the is, is a chemical. You can tell no, someone feels by giving no, them. Why, why, Chris? Think about this. Sorry. Think about this. The argument for evolution, the argument for pleasure and pain under evolution is the organism doesn't act, experiences uh, pl um, pain, so it avoids it. Yeah. It, it experiences it and avoids it. Yeah. Implied in that is the idea that the organism had a choice. The choice to feel pleasure, the choice to feel pain. And so it abstains from the choice to feel pain to seek pleasure. Yeah. yeah. Under evolution and under a deterministic view of the world and uh, of how the, the universe operates, determinism, then there's no point in having this idea of pleasure and pain or this attribute and this experience because you will never have a choice to avoid pleasure or pain. It's a byproduct. It doesn't have an explanation under evolution and determinism. It might be a bit complicated for you to understand and appreciate. It would be involuntary. I say this. I don't understand. You could, I could inject... You, you you could inject chemicals in someone that would make them feel pain. So it's just a chemical reaction. It's it doesn't just, matter. Uh, it can be a chemical reaction. The point here is why did evolution evolve this evolve this trait, this biological trait? Because the biological the idea of evolution is that we evolve these biological traits because they help for survival of the species as a whole. Yeah. But you have a trait that has no impact in the decision making process. Of the brain it for does. that organism, so you have it a does. trait that has no impact on the survivability. There, there are people organism. who don't feel pain today, and they die at a much higher frequency because they're you know, not able to. The argument. It's, Maybe it it's been beneficial to evolution. Look, 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 guys, it's been a, it's been fun, but Chris, good night. Good night. Was, was I being clear? Was that because it can be? No, you, you were being crystal clear, dude. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Alhamdulillah, we got to learn a lot as well. Mashallah. Oh, beautiful knowledge, mashallah. But uh, he's never going to accept it. He's going to waffle on. He's going to invent some other pseudo thing that he believes to be true without any evidence, and he's going to try and run with that. It's just not going to stop. But but was, he, it, was he an agnostic or was he an atheist? I, I missed the first. He, he was an atheist. atheist. The beautiful thing is, you, Sharif, there will be people watching that, atheists watching that, who will start questioning themselves based upon that. So don't worry about Chris. Chris was just the muse. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to, I mean, it would have been interesting to see how he develops. You know how we talked about um, physical laws. If the physical laws could implement themselves, that tells you that they have ability of, of choice. These are something that has ability, something that, you know, self-aware. So that again goes to, I mean, all, all the things that they want to avoid as axiomatic proves the point that, okay, in, in as, for theism, that we believe according to even their arguments, that there is an agency, there is a necessary being who has will, who has knowledge and who has ability to do things. I mean, I'm not sure how they miss this. Yeah. yeah. I think um, we have to explain to them the difference between mechanism and agency because they always get confused in the two. I mean, we can, mm -hmm. we can explain to someone how a car works, how every component of it works, okay? But it'll be easy if, if, if they can see that all of this didn't just come about by itself, you know, there's an explanation for it. There's, a, there's an agency what brought it into existence. So I think the cause and effect, uh, maybe explanation could help as well, inshallah. Yeah. I think what's happening is, you know, their idea of the science of the gaps. Since we have no mechanism, that means no one made it. Yeah. Yes, exactly that. <laughs>